justified. The recording is starting late in the, um, in the talk, but the slides will be up with the talk itself as well. Okay, back to this. So, um, so another type of a view that you can make is lists of sorted content or categorized content. So this one on the right, um, you'll see up at the top are recipe types, appetizers, desserts, marinades. And whatever you have right now, drinks is selected, and so drinks are the recipes that show. Um, if somebody clicked on breakfast, then they would see recipes for breakfast. Um, or in this case, these are, uh, this is kind of a, a directory that's sorted by type, so film fund sites versus post-production websites. So it's all sorting, um, which, is, which is very useful, obviously, on a lot of websites now. Um, another really useful thing for views is you can use, you can restrict the access of your views display to a certain type of user role or based on certain permissions. So you can create views for your site administrators. Um, for example, you might be building a website for someone, uh, for a client, who's not very technically savvy and doesn't really know how to get to the content list. So you can create a different view for them that's more logical towards how they might work with the website. Um, th in this particular case, it's the view is defined to only show the user the content that they created and let them have access to editing the content they created as opposed to just anybody's content. Um, so those are some of the things that you can do with views. Now, the majority of this talk is really going to be about doing it. So let's get started. I have a very simple website up here using the Garland theme. And I need my iPad to stop rotating for me. Okay. So the Garland theme um, is, is set up. And there's a very simple website in here with just one view right now, which is just a photo gallery view of pictures of my, um, my dog and one of my cats split up by name of the pet. Um, so that's all that's in here. I actually have a lot of content in here already. If I go to the content list and reset, can you all see that? Is that big enough? Do I need to make it bigger? Yeah, okay. So there's a ton of content in here. I used the Devel module to generate some fake content for me. Um, this is a very useful tip that you'll want to write down for yourself. There's a module called Devel, and Devel has a sub-module called content, or Devel Content Generate, or Devel Generate Content. And when you're building your website, you can actually use it to create a bunch of dummy content for your website um, so that you can actually build it without trying to put the content in yourself. So it's very useful. So I use that, which is why there's a whole bunch of lorem ipsum stuff in here um, to, to make use of. So there's a ton of content. But there's no way to see it right now. If I click on the home, there's just this, uh, this page right here, and there's really nothing else. So now we need to start actually creating these, uh, these things that we want to see. So the first thing I'm going to do is give you just a quick overview of what Views looks like. Um, you've all installed Drupal, right? OK, heads nodding. So I'm not going to talk about that. If you haven't or if you need help, Stop by the Drupal Chicks table. Um, but this assumes that you've installed Drupal, you've installed Views, and Views is, uh, is activated, so um, is enabled. So, and this also uses, I'm using the admin menu to just make it quicker. It's another module. It's a great module to use. It just makes everything easier to access. So site building, Views, click on that. And now I get a list of all of the views. This first one is the view that I created that shows you my dog. Um, the rest are default views that exist because of modules that I've enabled or just out of Drupal core, or sorry, not Drupal core, but views, just the views out of the box module. I, I kind of think of views as Drupal core, even though it's technically not. Um, but um, so these are default views that are already existing. When you're learning views, one of the greatest things to do is to actually take a look at some of these views. Um, I, I like the archive one. So you can go in and enable it. And then rather than editing it, um, rather than just editing this one, 
maybe you'll want to come back to the archive one by default or take a look at what it's doing, you can actually go ahead and clone it and give it a new name. And that's all I'll do for now. I'll leave everything else alone. And now I can actually go in and edit this and see what it's doing without hurting the original archive view. So I can go back to that and compare it. Um, when I first started learning web development, it was you know back in the day when, ooh, you can actually change the background color on your web page. Um, and really the way that, uh, I, some of you probably remember that time, the way that we learned then was we stole other web pages and we just changed them, right? <laughs> some people are nodding, some people are laughing. Um, <laughs> That's how I learned. <laughs> so it's not quite that simple anymore because everything's dynamic. Then it was all static. Now it's dynamic. So it's not quite that simple. But this is the same concept. You take this view, you clone it, and then you start changing it. And then you compare the two. And you'll, you'll really learn a lot about how it works. One of the really nice things is down here is a live preview option. And if you click this preview button right here, it shows you a preview of the view that you're looking at. So now you can see what this view is doing. Before we actually go and look at how the view is set up, you can see what it's doing. It's um, basically aggregating or, or merging all of the content into one link um, for based on month. So for August 2010, there's 23 posts. And for July 2010, there's eight posts. And if you click on either one of these, you get those posts from that month. So that's what this view is doing. Very logical. And let's just go up here and, and see the basic view interface. The defaults are kind of the guide by which every display within the view operates. And based on that guide, it tells you, okay, generally the displays, you, you have a view that has um, all kinds of information in it. And then that view has a bunch of separate displays. The displays might be a block that you're placing in your right sidebar. It might be a page. Um, the display might be an RSS feed. Or it might be an attachment that goes onto another view. Um, so, so you'll build the displays off of the view. So the defaults basically give you a sense of what's going to govern every display that you create. Um, this particular one is making use of arguments for that sorting that's happening down at the bottom. So arguments are happening by this. So if we go in and change something about this argument, I'm just clicking on this right here, and I'm going to change it to um, a sorted ascending instead, and update. And then give it a moment to, oops, I just need to update that as well, update that as well. And now you'll see this flips itself. So, um, so that's a good way, that's a really good way to learn views, is to make use of the default ones that come out of the box that aren't enabled. Enable them, clone them, and start playing. And see what happens. Um, Okay, but before we do that, let's go ahead and actually create a view. So I'm just going to go back to Views, to the main Views page. And um, I'm going to add a new view. And let me just make sure I'm not skipping something important. Okay, so I'm adding a new view, and I'm just going to call it, um, I'll call it Photos because it'll be for the photos. Um, pictures of Rain's pets. The tag is useful if you're going to have a million views. Um, it's a good idea to start using tags like um, this is a view for the shopping pages. So you would say shopping. Or this is a view for your site administrators. So management. Just use tags because you'll see later you, when you start ending up with a ton of views it's, you, you want some kind of a sorting mechanism for your views. Um, so, but I'm going to skip that for now. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, I'm going to use it so that you can see what it does. Now, there's also this thing that says view type. For the most part, as you're starting out, the only view type that you're really going to be making is a node view. That's going to satisfy 90% of what you're going to use views for. Um, that being said, these other ones are useful, and um, maybe about another 5% is going to be satisfied by the user 
view, which gives you lists of users and things like that. So, so we're just going to start with a node view. And once you have that, you have the view itself with the, with the defaults. Um, we don't have any displays listed below the defaults. And we have sort of this basic um, palette that doesn't have anything in it. Now we can start setting these, these settings. Um, so in the defaults, the first thing I'm going to do is I want these to be photos of the pets, right? So I'm going to add a filter. And the filter says, what is this content that you're honing in on? So the first filter I'm going to add is node. Um, content types are node types. So I'm going to go to node and filter by node type. I'm also going to filter by node published. And I'll explain that in a minute. And I'm going to add that. So published, yes. Um, if you, your views are super smart. And if you don't add published to your filter, you will be displaying unpublished content in your view. So if you have a list of nodes that you're displaying and you have some content that goes through a, project, through a workflow of some sort, your end users will see it on the site if you don't say, show me only published stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I'm seeing nodding. So raise your hand if, if I lose you at any point. I don't want to lose anyone. Um, so I'm going to say yes, published. And then the more important thing here, node type, well, I only want photos. I don't want recipes, pages, or stories. I just want photos. And I'm going to update that. Now it's going to complain to me because this type of view that we're creating, if I go back up here, the row style is fields in the basic settings. And I'm going to click on that and show you what your choices are. Your choices are fields and node. Node is that kind of interesting front page story feed style. It's just the teaser, the title, the teaser, and then the read more or comments links for all of your posts, and you really don't have much control over what it looks like. So usually you're not going to use node as your row style. Usually you're going to use fields as your row style. Um, but if you're using fields, you won't be able, your preview will complain to you until you start actually setting up fields that you're going to look at. Yes? When you went by the types and you had recipes, photos, mm -hmm. did you create those types somewhere I, else? Yes, I created those using CCK, Content Construction Kit, oh. and they're custom content types that I've created. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, so I'm going to say, um, okay, so I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to cancel it. And I want to get rid of this because I actually want to start seeing this preview. So in order to get rid of that, I need to start saying what fields... I'm going to um, I'm going to show in this view. Um, you know, let's actually before I do that, let's just go to node view so that you can see the difference. Um, let's do that. And here you go. That's what node view does. It literally just pulls it. You have no control over it really, and it just pulls it in. So, I'm going to go back to fields. And now I'm going to uh, this is always a good thing to do, hide empty fields. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess why that is. If a field's empty, you don't really want space for it, right? Um, that can look kind of ugly. Um, sometimes you won't do that, but it's a good idea to do it. Okay, so now we're going to add some fields. We're, we're actually going to tell the view what to display. Um, so the first thing that I want to add, I, um, I think I, the node title would be nice. So under node, I'll go and look for title. And you're, you're just going to kind of have to look around and find where things are hiding. It's going to be an exploration at first. Um, but it is somewhat logical once you start to be really comfortable with Drupal. If it's, if it's categorized as content or if it's categorized as node information or, or if it's categorized as comments information, um, you'll, you'll get used to that after a certain point. So I'll just leave this as it is for now and it'll look nice and ugly. There you go. That's, that's, what I just, uh, that's literally what I just told it to show. I told it to show photo titles and nothing else. So maybe it'd be kind of nice to add the photo itself. That happens to be content because it's a content field that I created. So um, I'm going to select that. And you know what? Let's also show the caption because the captions, I tried to make them cute even though they're probably really cheesy. And um, 
Okay, so I'm just going to leave these at their defaults for now. I'll update and leave this one alone and update. And now we still have something fairly ugly, right? What we're really trying to get to is this. Uh, well, actually not quite this because I wanted to show the title and the caption. So something similar, more similar to that. So the next thing we need to look at is, um, you know what, I forgot my laser pointer, but you'll see the, the labels, photo, title, caption. You don't really want those in your view, right? Probably not. But sometimes you do. So, sometimes you definitely do. Um, there are reasons to use them. But for now, what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and I just clicked, I literally just clicked on the word title, node title right here. And under label, I'll just delete that. Now the other thing that I want to do is I really like having titles wrapped in header tags. It's good for SEO, it's good for the look, it's good for CSS. So I'm actually going to rewrite this by checking rewrite the output of this field. And I'll do it as an H3, perhaps. Down here are the replacement patterns. This uses the token module. You do have to have the token module installed and enabled in order to make use of this. So I'll just take that token, that replacement token, and this is some basic HTML, so it, it's helpful to know a little bit of HTML, um, even if you're doing mostly just content management stuff. The title will never be empty, but it's just good standard practice to hide something if it's empty. And titles usually link to their node, right? So I guess I'll check that on too, and that might be kind of nice. So I'm going to update that, and automatically already something better is showing up. We're still not seeing the picture. Um, we still have some weird captions. It's not quite in the right order, but, um, but it looks a lot better already, right? Okay, so the next thing I'll do is, um, is take a look at this caption one. Again, I want to remove the label. Now, one of the things to note is, remember on the last one, the label was right up here, right? Well, on this one, it's actually down here. And the reason is because on the first one, the title, that was a default field in a content type that already exists in all content types. The second one is a field that I created. Um, through CCK. So you'll have to look in both places for your labels if you want to hide them. Just know that it's here. You can both rename your label or you can say none or you can use the custom one. And I'll hide this if, if it's empty and that's it. I'll update that. Okay, so now the caption is already better. Now we still need to fix two things. Um, we need to fix the photo itself, so that we're seeing the photo, and we need to fix um, the order of these, of these elements. And then we can start working on the display. So I'm going to go into content photo here. And um, what I want to do is link the field to the node, hide it if it's empty, no label, and now there's this format option. Format, this is something slightly more um, advanced, so I'll, I'll give you a hint into it, but it's using the image cache and image API modules. I have some image cache settings preset, um, so I'll just go here and I'll show you. I built these image cache settings. What I've basically said is um, if a photo is supposed to use this setting, then show it at 200 by 200. If it's supposed to use this setting, show it at 50 by 50. So actually scale it and crop it. Um, so this is a different module. I'm not going to go into it, but if you really have questions about it, come find me um, later at the Drupal Chicks table. What I am going to tell you is that these are already set up, and so in order to make this look pretty, I could, if I didn't have those set up, I could just use image. And let me show you what happens if I do that. Oh. Okay, they're cute. They're not quite what we want, right? So, um, so instead, under here, I'm gonna choose um, 200 by 200, and I'm gonna link it to the node because in a photo gallery, that's usually what happens, right? So, link to node, and update. Much better, right? Much better. Okay, so captions are usually underneath the photo. That's one issue. And we also, and we're really, we're trying to go for this, so we're trying to go for a grid. 
Um, so we'll do that right now as well. So um, first thing I'm going to do is reorder these elements. And to do that, I'm going to click on this um, down up arrow that you're seeing, which says rearrange when I mouse over it. And I'm going to click on that. And now I have these nice little handles to literally drag and drop fields. I can also use this to remove fields, which is quite nice. Um, so I'm just going to drag caption under photo and update that. And already that's been adjusted. Um, so, so that's working with fields, which are also one of the primary elements that you'll be using when working with views. Filters and fields are the, really the, the prime tools. Beyond that, we now have, um, we'll get into relationships and arguments later, I hope. Um, and sort criteria is also very important. So if we look at this, I, I don't quite know how it's sorting. I think um, I think this is the first photo I uploaded. I'm pretty sure this is the first photo I uploaded. And then um, and then it goes um, in order to the last. Well, really what I'd like is I'd like it to sort um, first by pet, perhaps, and then within by pet, maybe alphabetically by photo title. Who knows? You might You might have a million different ways that you want to sort. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the little plus sign next to sort criteria. You'll notice, by the way, I'm saving default settings or basic settings for last because really setting up your the essentials is what you're going to do first. Basic settings is more about display. So you'll get into that after you get your essentials going. Um, okay, so I clicked the little plus next to sort criteria. And what are the two things I decided to sort by? I decided to sort by pet. I've actually used the taxonomy module to handle who the pet is. The pet name is a taxonomy term. So I know that I need to go to taxonomy and add term. And then I also know that I want to sort by title, alphabetically by title. So that's under node and title. So I'll just select both of those. I just click them and now I'll click add. So for title, I want it to be ascending, so I'll update that, that's good. And for term, I also want it to be ascending, which means A, B, C, D, as opposed to uh, backwards. Um, so I'll update that. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Oh, that's why. Okay. So now the, the problem is Buster is the cat, Pixel is the dog. Buster starts with B, Pixel starts with, um, and Buster starts with B, Pixel starts with P. So really Buster should show up first, right? But, um, but Buster is not showing up first. We have Pixel and then we have Buster and then we have Pixel and, and it's a mess. Well, the reason is because the sort order is also very important. It sorts first by whatever's first and then by whatever's next. So since I'm sorting by title first, the first thing it's sorting is alphabetically by the title, the node title. And as a result, the pet name is kind of irrelevant. So I just need to switch that the same way that I moved fields around. I'll click on that little rearrange button and then move this up and say update. And now this is much better. Now pixel is at the, sorry, buster is at the top and pixel is at the bottom. And you'll notice that the titles are advancing alphabetically. Have I lost anyone yet? Are you all here? Great. Uh, are any of you really bored? <laughs> all right, good. Okay. Um, so, so the next thing that I want to do now, I like the sorting. Um, I like the stuff that's on there. The fields are looking okay to me, but I really want a grid. So I'm I, actually, before I want the grid, this is also only 10 pictures, and well, I like my pets, so I want to see more than 10 pictures. So I'll go up to the basic settings and see this, items to display, 10. That's the default on any view. So there's two ways that I can handle this. The first way is I can say, you know what, show me 20, 30, or I can put a zero in to show as many as exist. There might end up being hundreds of pictures of my pets, so that's probably not a good idea. Um, so maybe I'll just start with 15. And then um, update that. And then there's this option up here, use pager. 
So if you have more than the number that, um, that actually exists, you can actually set it up to use a pager so that people can page through. And I think I have more than 15 photos up here. Oh, I guess not. Um, but so I will shorten this back to, um, I'll make it nine because I'm going to do a grid of four. And then you should see the pager. There's the pager right down there at the bottom. Um, so, so the next thing that I want to do is set up the grid. That's going to be under style. Um, and so I'll click on style. Now, style will really, by default, the only style options that you'll see are grid, HTML list, table, and unformatted. Those other styles that you're seeing there are other modules that I've added that I'm hoping to have time to show you, but I'm watching the time go by quickly. Um, but I'll at least tell you what those modules are because they're really cool, basically. Um, so I'm going to turn this into a grid, which is what it says it is. It's not trying to lie to you. And I'll give it three because that seems about right. That's what we did here. So I'll say three, align horizontally, and update. And suddenly this view makes sense. Um, and I can see that it, that it makes sense. And the great thing is, um, what you're looking at right now is completely unstyled. So if you are comfortable with CSS, you can now use Firebug, find out what the classes are that are wrapping things because everything is wrapped in a class, and then style to your heart's content and make it look however you want it to look. Um, so, and you could change the image cache sizes, you can change everything and make it look however you want. Um, now the other thing that would be really nice, you'll see here, I have pixel up here and then I have buster here. So I've actually sorted it by pet and I've given you the pet name up at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that because that's also, bless you, that's also very, very useful. Um, so under style, you might have noticed there's these little buttons next to some of these. These are settings buttons. So I'm going to click on the settings button and there's this thing right here, grouping field. And, oh, I guess I can't group anything. The thing about grouping field is it's fantastic. Grouping field is what allowed me to do this, and the field that I was grouping was pet name. But you have to actually create, you actually have to have the field being called into your query in order to use it to group. So we're going to go back over to fields because I want pet name to be the grouping field. And right now, it's not an option because I haven't called it into my query. So I'm going to click the plus sign and Pet name happens to be a taxonomy term. So I'll go down to taxonomy. If you don't know what to do, you can also just go to all and then scroll for about an hour until you find what you want. Um, but so I'll click on term and add that. And I definitely don't want a label. But the other thing, um, I won't link it, but that's sometimes nice to do. The other thing that I want to do is um, well, I'll do that in a minute. So now every single pet uh, picture has the pet name right under it, and that's kind of annoying, right? That, that doesn't really make sense. So, um, so I'll go back to um, this field, taxonomy term in my fields, and there's exclude from display. I'll click that. Now what's happening is the query is being called but it's not actually showing up on your page. So you can use it anywhere you want to use it. Um, for example, I could use it, maybe I want it in the name, um, in the title. So what I would do is move the taxonomy term up above title. It's hiding right now. It's, it's excluded from the display. And now I'm going to go in and edit node title. Well, node title is already being um, rewritten. So what I'm going to do is find name right here. That's the replacement token. And I'll just add that token right there. Have I lost anyone? Great. OK. Um, and I'm going to update this. And now look what happens. It's buster, 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 pixel, pixel. So that's useful. 
Um, imagine what you can use this for, right? You can start um, concatenating a ton of stuff into one field output if you want to do that. Um, likewise, um, well, likewise, there is actually a global custom text field, and that's empty. And so anything that you're calling into your fields, you can use the replacement tokens and put them into this field. And it's completely custom. You can do whatever you want to it. Maybe that's too much power. I don't know. But um, so now what I'm going to do is remove this, um, remove the pet name from here because that's fairly redundant. By the time you've seen one picture of Pixel, you know it's Pixel. So I'll do that. And then I'm going to go back to grid settings. And grouping field now exists, taxonomy term. So I'll select that, and voila, there it is. It doesn't look so great. It'd be nice if it looked a little more exciting. So you can actually rewrite this as well. Um, so, well, that didn't do much. <laughs> not, I'm not used to working with Garland, so. Uh, but so that that gives you a, a whole lot right there in terms of how from there you can just imagine what else you can do. Um, it's already 1035 and I do want to leave the last 15 minutes for QA. So um, rather than showing you the endless other things I was going to going to show you um, with recipes and stories, um, I'll just show you a couple displays and give you a sense of some of the other cool modules and then we can go into Q&A. Um, so another very useful thing is the title up here. The title is uh, you know what appears as the title of your of your page. So I'll just go in here and I'll give it a title of uh, pet photos. And you don't see it yet because there's um, you're just looking at a preview. We're not actually looking at a page, but we'll see that in a in a moment. Um, I also have some other things that are very useful here. If I'm going to be theming this view, and you'll learn more about this in other sessions, this theme information button just gives you information as to how you need to name your files to theme the view. Um, if you're not there yet, just forget what I just said. But if you are there yet, know that this is here and very, very useful. Um, also, empty text. If there's nothing in the query results, do you want empty text to show up, or do you just not want it to appear at all? Um, header and footer, you can actually add. Um, I'll add a header here. So that's just a simple HTML header that now goes at the top of the page. Um, so from there, I actually don't have any displays. I've only set up a query, and I have not set up any way to display this query. So now what I need to do is actually create a display of some sort. The key options that you're going to make use of um, are mostly going to be page and block. Um, feed is if you're turning it into an RSS feed. You wouldn't use a grid view for an RSS feed. You would use a node uh, row style for an RSS feed. but um, so, so feeds are, are quite nice, and that's where you would do it. But for now, we're actually going to do a page, and if we have time, we'll try to do a block. So I'll create a page and add this display. Now you'll notice the, the default settings are all still there, and everything's gone into italics. What that means is it's calling from the default settings. So in a particular display, you can override your default settings. But if I click on this and edit it right here, I am editing the defaults. So if I edit this, defaults are edited, and any other display coming from this view has changed. So what you'll want to do is when you click on something to edit in a display, the first thing you'll want to do is click Override. And um, that's fine. You can start making your changes. OK, it has no pass, so it's going to complain. But now you'll see. Um, everything's italic except for fields, which are now overridden. They're no longer the defaults, so you can change them for this display without changing others. And page settings, because that's specific to this particular display.
Um, so those are not in italics. You can edit away without affecting your defaults. Everything in italics, you edit it, you edit your defaults. Uh, very important to know because it's super frustrating when you accidentally edit your defaults. We've all been there and hated ourselves for it. Um, but you'll see that it's complaining to me right now. Display page uses a path, but the path is undefined. Basically what that means is if it's page view, it needs a URL. So this is a page and it has the URL photos first. So if you're setting up a page, it won't know what to do if you don't actually give it a URL. And that's going to be right under here, page settings, path, and I'll just make the path photos and update that. Now it's happy again. I can also put this into a menu. So let's just make it a normal menu entry. Let's put it in the primary links and call it photos. And I'll update that. Okay, so, so now that we actually do have a page to look at. Um, the other thing to note is there's a whole bunch of yellow on here. The views user interface is fantastic in that it uses Ajax, so you can see things updating right away. That's also scary because if you navigate away from this while they're still yellow, it doesn't save. So you might have done all this work and then you say, hey, I want to go look at it and you lose your work because you didn't press the save button. So before you go anywhere and as you're editing your view, press the save button. Now you'll see that there's nothing yellow anymore. It's all gray again. So it's been saved. This view now exists and we can actually go look at it on the site. So just uh, go to that page and there's the title that we gave it. There's the HTML header. There it is in the menu. All this was done by the view. Um, and here's the sorted um, images and I can page to page two and now there's more images. So um, Yes, okay, got the important stuff in there. Um, to create a block view, let's just do that really quickly. I'm going to add the display. I just selected from this drop menu, I selected block. Um, I'm going to leave this as a grid, but what I'm going to do is under fields, I only want the photo. I don't want anything else, and I want it to be super small. So I'm going to go in and remove these extra fields. What's wrong with what I'm about to do? Yeah, thank you. All right, so I'm going to override it so that I don't actually destroy my other display. And I'll remove term, I'll remove title, and I'll remove caption, and update. The next thing I'm going to do is change the, um, the format to the 50 by 50 linked to node, and I'll update that. Okay, so here's the block right now. They're small little pictures. Um, but the grid is probably nine, maybe I just want four. So I'll override that and I'll make this one four. And then um, maybe in here the grid should actually be overridden to show two. You'll notice the grouping field went away. That's because in this display, I removed the field that it was grouping. So it automatically knew, oh, I can't group by that. So it just threw it away. Um, okay, so, oh, and the pager is kind of silly for a block. So we'll take the pager off for the block. And the other thing I like to do with blocks is I like to put in a footer. Let's, let's get rid of this header. I like to put in a footer to the full page. This is just my own. Um, you can actually do this automatically with the more link. I tend not to use that. My personal preference is to go to the footer and say, um, and put in my own. I, I just, I feel it's easier to style that way. It's, I have more control over it. I, I like control um, over my views. And so now here's that more button that I just put in there. And um, so I'm going to save this. Oh, no, I'm not going to save it. Under block settings, this is really important as well. This admin none right here, 
that's going to be the title that you're going to see on your list of blocks. You've all seen that list of blocks page, right? There's like a million blocks on there and you have to move them around. You want a good title on that page. So um, I'll call this Pet Photos. So that I know what it is. And I'm going to save that. And there's so much more I wanted to show you guys. So, um, so definitely look at the video. Um, okay, so we now have a block. So I'm going to go over to blocks and scroll down and find pet photos block. There it is. So it's there for us, created by the view. I'll put it in the left sidebar, save that, and there we go. There it is. Um, one really nice thing that I can do with this pet photos block is I can also change the sort criteria. So I'm just going to go here, override this, and I'm going to remove both of these sort criteria. And I'm going to add a new sort criteria that I absolutely love, which is global random. Add that and save that. And now if I just keep refreshing, it'll show you different pictures. That's kind of fun. I think it's fun. Um, okay, so given that time is really, really short, I want to give you a sense of what some of those other modules that I was going to show you do pretty much out of the box with some theming. Hopefully I'm online. Um, so View Slideshow. Yes, good. View Slideshow is doing this. Come on. You can rotate. Okay, it's supposed to rotate. It usually does. Um, probably because I have my resolution so high that I'm still moused over it. Um, but, yeah. So, so it, it rotates. Um, that's View Slideshow. Um, views Accordion. I think it's there. No, it's Support. Sorry. Okay, Views Accordion does this. That's kind of fun, right? And this is all, this is pretty much out of the box. Obviously, it's styled with some CSS, but it's, it's very, very useful. Um, so, Views Rotator is another nice one. Um, uh, LADrupal.org has Views Rotator going on over here. Yeah, that's Views Rotator. Uh, sorry, the picture, the picture that you're seeing. Now, everything I showed you today was related to pictures, but everything that you just saw can be applied to any type of content. Um, we actually have to stop there because I really do want to give you some QA time. So, um, so please do watch the video, and I'll uh, let me let me go through these really quickly. Um, which includes some information on where to get the video. So warning reminders, things that I mentioned to be really, really careful about. Defaults and overrides, which you saw. Nothing saves until you save it. Um, make sure that you include published yes if you're doing content that needs to be moderated because you could end up sending unpublished content to your front page. Never a good thing to explain to a client. Um, and then don't add unnecessary things to your views because these do get to be complex queries, they are heavy, they do give you a performance hit at a certain point. So just think very carefully about what you need, what you want, and how that can work. Um, really cool modules that you should really look at that are pretty simple straight out of the box. So once you get comfortable with the interface, uh, Views Rotator, Views Slideshow, Views Accordion, I showed you what they all do. Views Bulk Operations allows you to, um, you've all looked at that content page, it allows you to, um, do in your views, be able to publish a bunch of stuff, unpublish a bunch of stuff, um, stuff like that. Calendar gives you some good calendaring stuff right out of the box. It is a little complicated, so um, maybe save that for after you've played with everything else. And then views or. Be careful with this. Don't put it on a production site unless you really test it carefully because it's still in, in the red color on Drupal.org. Um, but it's very useful because it allows you to do or statements, um, do some concatenation um, in your views filters, which is very nice. Okay, um, 
Yes, more ways to learn. I'll leave this one. First, I'll, I'll flash this at you, how to reach me. Um, hopefully that was enough. I'll, I'll be at the Drupal Chicks table. You know how to find me. So if that's not enough, um, you can catch it later. But this is what I really want to leave up while we do the Q&A, uh, which is more ways to learn. So the first thing would be on my website um, is a link to the video from last year. And, um, and also off of my website, I think, is a link to the Drupal. I did this at DrupalCon as well. And it was also two hours. I did it with Doug Van, and that was great. We had fun. Um, so there's, that's slightly different than this as well. Um, but really, the Using Drupal from O'Reilly book is spectacular. Definitely get that book. Um, and it has a, a pretty good chapter for views. And um, this tutorial from Matt is pretty good as well. So take a look at that one also. All right, deep breath, Q&A is open. Questions? Yes? It's all in there. Um, so it's not just the, the any module that is designed to work with views will automatically give you data in views that you can actually um, find in those fields. Um, so pretty much any database table will reflect in the fields if there's end user viewable content within that. That's a really good question. I've never tried to do that. Um, probably, but I, I need to look at what you're trying to do and see how that would work. Yeah, you should. Well, um, there's there's hooks, there's overrides, and then you can also create your own little module to start calling into those things as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, yes? So I was hoping to learn about relationships and arguments, but uh, could you briefly explain? Because I watched a bunch of tutorials and I really don't understand yeah. what those are. Okay, relationships and arguments are very confusing. And, and I don't know why, because they're actually, they make a lot of sense. The thing about relationships is you need other content to relate to. So you need something like node reference or uh, the flag module if you're allowing people to flag stuff. Um, so relationships work with other stuff, not really on their own. And I think that there's a session happening that Doug Van is going to do later on that goes into relationships and some other fun stuff. Um, arguments are kind of another way to, to handle the display itself. So is it okay if I clear this screen? It'll be on the video, so. Um, okay, so um, let's go back in here. Uh, we can edit this, this view to add an argument. And let's make the argument the taxonomy for the pet name. Uh, and I'll uh, sort it ascending. Leave all that alone for now and update. Update. Sure. OK, so now the view, because of the argument, I've basically told the view um, instead of giving me the actual content, give me the argument that I've created, which is the taxonomy term and the number of nodes within that taxonomy term. So if you're doing some kind of a glossary, the argument is a really good way to go. Um, if you're doing something with the calendars, um, you're, you might use the arguments for calendars a lot. It's a great way to create menus, um, especially archive menus of some sort that are dynamically generated using um, the content that you have in your site so that you don't have to go in. Um, for example, this, this is actually done through arguments. Um, OK, this is done through arguments. These are recipes um, categorized by taxonomy term. And it's an argument giving you this menu. So um, into you click on sandwiches. And now you get a list of all the recipes that are sandwiches. And I didn't create this view right here. 
I, I did this display that you're seeing, I didn't create that. I created the argument for it, which just gives you the menu. And then I said, um, put the taxonomy term into the URL. And so that's how you're getting this in the URL. And the way that you do that, um, I know I have it here somewhere. Right. The way that you would do that is uh, the very first argument in your list of arguments is going to be percent one. And the very second one is percent two and so on. So up here in title, I can override and say uh, percent one, update that. Now if I save this, and oh, I, I didn't do an override, so it did it to all my views, which is funny. Okay, so, so now, um, first of all, this is not good, obviously. So usually I put these, argument, it, these arguments into blocks as opposed to into pages so that I can leave the title out and play with it a little bit more. Um, and maybe put this over here or something like that. But if I click on one of these, now I have only pixel photos. Pixel is in the URL, and I did not create that display. It created that display using the argument. I hope that helps clarify. It's really complicated, so definitely go to Doug's talk because it's it's not comp. It's actually quite simple, but it's really confusing. <laughs> right. I did that. Right, so, it, well, it, it actually, sorry, you put it in the title through, um, through the argument, but it'll automatically put it in the URL when it does this kind of a summary view. So the, the arguments do go into the URL. So if you have an additional argument and you did percent one, percent two, it'll mm -hmm. throw it all in there? Yes, it will. Yeah, can, so it, it's definitely one to, it, the only way to really learn arguments is to just play with them and get really frustrated, and then finally get what you want, um, and try to find somebody else who will help you play with it. Yeah, but it's, it's, that's a hands-on thing, for sure. Any other questions? Okay, I think I have to wrap up, but um, I think the next thing is the keynote. And thank you. Definitely check out Doug's session. Um, he expands on views, and then also, I scheduled, Doug pr proposed to do a Q&A, an open Q&A at the end of the camp, and so I scheduled that for 3.30 on Sunday. So look for that session because if you have open questions and just want to talk with someone who's really good, he's great at answering questions, he's a friendly guy, um, so plan on that. And um, great, see you at the keynote in just a couple minutes. <laughs> and group photo, 3.30, please don't miss it. Ha, ha, ha.